Hey, welcome back to Content Marketing World Chatter. We got the equipment working again. So we're sorry for the blackout. I'm just kidding. I just like to add a little drama <laughs> to the conversation. We are here with Carla Johnson, who just flew in from Barcelona, who was there for what, two years? A year. A year. year. It seemed like two. It did. We Some days her. it did. We missed her. Now you, listen, let me go back in history a bit. Let's let the audience, let's remind them that you co-authored a book with Robert Rose here. That's right. The Experiences, the Seventh Era of Marketing. Yes. Yes. And um, what, what was your favorite, can you share one takeaway from that book? that you think might be helpful to the audience. You know, did you read it? Did you read I, it? Yeah, I read half of it. Okay. I read the other half that I didn't I read the important half. How's that? <laughs> and we're not going to announce which half that is. But that's coming out as a pop-up next Wednesday. Okay. When is the movie? Have you sold the movie rights? We are uh, just about, we are uh, waiting for Meryl Streep to sign. And yes. then, we'll, then, we'll, then we'll be good. I want to play I Phil Kotler. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you okay. do that. Right. I think you should. The fifth yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't good. filled Clayton Christensen's shoes yet, but he's a size 15, so it takes a while. I can't do that. No, yeah. no yeah. I'm not going to help you out there. I'm not going to help you out there. Now, look, wait, tell me what you were speaking on yesterday. Uh, today, actually. I spoke today. on a lot of things yesterday, but today, okay. my session was about architecting teams. Okay. And uh, what we tend to do as marketers is that we have these job descriptions and we throw everything that we can think of into these job descriptions because we don't want to hire somebody and then six months later they go, no, I'm moving on because you're having me do all this stuff and it wasn't in my job description. So we create these huge long descriptions all based on the role that we want somebody to do. So roles are how we want somebody to behave in a particular situation. But what we miss is how do people naturally function? And that's who we are right. and what we do. So when we build teams that are based more naturally on people's talents versus the role that we want them to play, we have more innovative teams, we have more stable teams, and we have teams that interact and are more high performance teams. Yeah. Uh, so you, you told me something the other day in the uh, green room. We had you waiting for a while. You did, I apologize. yeah. And that there were rude. brown M&Ms everywhere. That's right. I'll file a complaint about that. <laughs> she has a very short temper. Uh, about this point about what what if you supported an employee in his or her career uh, based on that person's talent, mm -hmm. based on what their gifts are, yeah. rather than, well, here's your title. Yep, absolutely, because when you look at that, like I call it people's natural genius. So one of your natural geniuses is that you're a bit of a provocateur and you challenge that status quo. And so when we see that kind of a person on a team, a lot of times we say, man, how come you always got to be in my face? How come, why can't we just put the strategy together, put it out the door? Like, why do you always have to be, okay. you know, Did you read my heads? HR file from IBM? <laughs> I think I may have. That's, I read that's every person over <laughs> file ever put together on you. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but for a provocateur, that's just their natural genius. Like, that's how they look at the world is, well, why can't it be better? Why can't it be different? Why can't we try these things? We want people like this on our team, but we need to be able to understand how to bring the talent out of everybody yeah. so that we can help provocateurs be successful, strategists be successful, uh, like culture shapers and collaborators. So we look at teams and the dynamics differently and then overlay the role we need them to play. But when you start just with the role, then you may have a strategist that's really in a wrong position. You know, you give them a title of strategist, but you need strategists who are writers and video editors and all sorts of things to really be successful. All right, and is it fair to say, is provocateur, that's French for jackass. Yes, it? absolutely. It's okay. a little nicely uh, yeah, more labeled. Yeah, a little polish there. Exactly. I, like <laughs> I appreciate that. Look, so you, you, you speak to companies uh, around the, you were actually just in Singapore. I was, speaking yeah. Speaking about this and helping companies kind of think about, all right, here's how we can apply this and here's how we shape this. How do you, is that, it, uh, is most of your work uh, speaking at, at conferences and with companies or do you get in and... Yeah, so I do some hands-on work. So when people, what I do is I have an assessment so people can understand the dynamics of their own team and how it's weighted based on, there's six archetypes based on research from the University of Michigan that I see within teams and the high performance team. So what I do is I'll work with a company and say, let's assess where you're at right now 
and understand the struggles that you're having with your team dynamics. And it could be internal, it could be with their ability to move projects through an organization, but it really centers around how you bring good ideas, better ideas into an organization and get people to be willing to change and look at things differently rather than fearing new ideas. And you know, if you want innovation in an organization, then people have to think differently. And part of the ways you get them to think differently is let them be themselves and however, whatever their role is, let them function based on their natural genius. And so I work with companies either to, to execute this, I do workshops so companies can learn how to understand their team and dynamic, dynamics, and then I do things like today where I speak at events or internal private events. Okay, yeah. All right. which of those do you enjoy the most? You know, I always like the hands-on part of working with people, yeah. hearing the feedback, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what, what, what did you learn the most about connecting with your kids when you were living in a foreign land? I, the thing, I, this is really a good question. The thing I learned most about connecting is this the with the kids. the first good question? Is that what you're saying? Th this is the first good question okay. I've Cause I think heard in the last seven minutes. <laughs> can, we, can the lower thirds, Tony, put provocateur <laughs> under her? And like with arrows pointing up. Yep. Is that uh, in order to get the kids to come forward and be more um, open with things, I really had to back off. So, really? Yeah, so it was, uh, it was almost like, the more I backed off and observed, rather than tried to lead them by the hand and say, come on, give this a try, do this, you know. And I think we do that as bosses, we do that as team members, we do it with ourselves individually, is we consistently try to pull things instead of giving space and allowing them to happen. Okay, all right, so now I don't feel so bad. Because I think with, I think with my son, I'm kind of worried that, I went to, I went to that stage where I thought, okay, I need to back off. And I did, but now I'm wondering, did I take too far of a step back, you know? And my, my boy just turned 12 uh, a couple of days ago, so now I'm rethinking all that. Yeah, but I, yeah. Well, and I think, I think when you look at any dynamic where you're backing off and letting people do their thing or allowing things to happen, you do have a delicate dance of, is it too far, too much? Right. And what that distance is, depends on a situation and any different, you know, time. Because you know a Saturday morning is different than a Friday night. Look, I do think that's important. I, do, I, do th I, think, I think as humans in general, we, in relationship, we could stand to back off a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, still be attentive and loving, and, but also still say, yeah, I love, I love how you said it. You know, just kind of create some space there. Uh -huh. and, and, but let, especially with kids, when it's kids involved, let them know, hey, look, I'm here for you. I always got your back. I mm -hmm. always, always got your back. But, uh, you know, I'm going to give you your space and, you know, you, you come to me. Totally. I mean, I'm not saying there are times when I'm like going, ah, and looking between my fingers and just like waiting for the train wreck to happen. But, you know, like you can see what's coming and they're like, no, I got this, mom. I totally got this. And like not a literal train wreck, but, you right. know, you, you know what's going to happen because you've been down that road. But the only reason I know the, the impact and the consequences in the recovery is because my parents allowed me to have it myself. And what I learned from it, you know, helped me grow and, and become a better person, you know, more resilient yeah. person. And it's so hard to watch your kids do that same crash because that's our nature is we want to protect them so they don't have to do that. But almost by not allowing them to do that, we take away a gift that's really important yeah. for them to develop as, as their own people. Yeah. All right, so listen, if we, if, if we want more parenting tips from you, <laughs> Absolutely. or, or want to bring you in <laughs> to help us look at our archetypes and try to get our teams to work together better, how do we reach yep. you? How do we find you? You can find me on my website, www.carla, with a C, Johnson, dot C-O, not com, just C-O. Just C-O. C -O. Yep, dot C-O. you're too busy to type I am to the, just the, finish the, it. The that was no, succinct. Do. I do, I do. Yeah, I, I hear you. All right, Carla Johnson, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having it. me, Tim. All right.